new videos every day. Life Wisdom. Hi, I'm Dr. Colin Ross. I'm a psychiatrist based in Dallas, and I want to talk about breast cancer today. And you might say, well, why is a psychiatrist talking about breast cancer? Well, I did go to medical school, so I have an MD. I've actually, as a medical student and intern, worked with cancer survivors. And as we all know, everybody either has cancer themselves, has close relatives or loved ones, or knows somebody who's had cancer. And most people know somebody who's died of cancer. So I'm just interested in it as an MD and as a human being. And I think that the whole cancer, if I could call it the cancer industry, is, is gone astray. Uh, now, since I'm not a cancer expert, you might say, well, who's he to be saying that? Well, here's why I'm saying it. The basic cancer model that dominates the field now is, and, and I talk about this in another video about the Nic Nicholas Gonzalez pancreatic enzyme treatment, the basic model that dominates the cancer world now is you've got abnormal DNA. You either inherited it or it became abnormal through some mutation. And that abnormal DNA causes, if it's in your breast, causes your breasts cancer. If it's in your brain, it causes your brain cancer. So it's all trying to figure out where's the abnormality in the DNA and exactly what are all the details and steps and how could we basically do genetic engineering to help get to the very basement level of what's causing cancer. That's the model. And it's, we have this other field now called epigenetics. So everybody now realizes, it wasn't true so much 20 years ago, that things in the environment and things inside the cell turn certain genes on, turn certain genes off. So the DNA isn't just driving the bus from the inside out, so to speak. How the DNA is either working, not working, is a large degree controlled by the environment. Everybody in science you know, knows that now. But it's like it gets kind of forgotten and set aside when we're deciding where are we going to put all our money, invest all our resources, because we're back to the abnormal DNA. And I want to use the BRAC gene for cancer to illustrate this logic. So the BRAC gene, there's two of them. There's BRAC1 and BRAC2, which is BR being breast, CA being cancer. And it's just hard to say BRCA or however you would say it, so everybody calls it the BRAC gene. And it's well known that if you are BRAC positive, you have one or the other of these abnormal genes, then your chance of developing breast cancer is really high. And so there's people now who their mother, their aunt, their grandmother, several people have died of breast cancer already, and they have the BRAC gene, they're BRAC positive. They actually get double mastectomies uh, 30, 35 years old as a cancer prevention strategy. Because if you have that gene, you are doomed at a very high risk rate to get cancer. That's the model. And that model supports people getting double mastectomies because the gene's just gonna do its thing, you know, very high odds, not 100%, but high odds. And you can't stop it, you're powerless, you just gotta get a mastectomy. The problem is that's not actually scientifically how it works. How do I know that? Well, because I read the original article published in Science, which is Science and Nature are the two main um, science journals in the world. So it doesn't get any you know, more official than science. And Michelle King is the woman who discovered the BRAC gene. And so when you have a scientific paper, you've got the title, and you've got the authors, and then you've got the abstract, which is a brief summary of the paper. Then you've got all the details of the paper. Right in the abstract, in the journal Science, by the person who originally discovered the BRAC gene, is this information. This is your chance of developing breast cancer by age 50 if you have the BRAC gene. So this is a, a sample of women in New York City, all of whom had the BRAC gene. If you have the BRAC gene and you're born before 1940, your chance of developing breast cancer is 64%, uh, 24%. If you're born after 1940 and you have the BRAC gene, your chance of developing breast cancer is 67%. So this is stated very clearly in the abstract. It's there for everybody to read. It's not hidden. You don't have to reanalyze everything. This 
So nothing's changed in the genes here. It's the BRAC gene in these women, and it's the BRAC gene in these women, exactly the same genes. But if you were born before 1940, your chance of getting breast cancer is only 24% by age 50. Same gene, one or the other of them. If you're born after 1940, your chance is 67%. The only way this could happen, medically, scientifically, biologically, for absolute sure, certain fact, the only way this jump in the rate of breast cancer could happen over such a short time period is there's something in the environment. Something has changed in the environment. Nothing has changed in the DNA. Therefore, it's got to be something in our food, something in our water, something in the air, pesticides. There's something that was present, say, 1980, 1990, that wasn't present back in 1940, 1930, 1920. So it's not just that the BRAC gene relentlessly causes the cancer. The BRAC gene doesn't act, isn't actually a cancer gene, really, when you get down to it. The BRAC gene makes you more susceptible to whatever it is in the environment. It's an interaction between the environment and the gene, not just the gene doing it by itself. And what if we went back and we had another line in this study? What if we looked at women who were born before 1880. Now we can't do that because they're all dead. But we know already that we've dropped, yeah, you know, within living memory, from 60% to 24% risk. So what if we went back and back in time to people born in the 19th century who were BRAC positive? Well, then we might find out that their risk of cancer was 8% or 12%. We might find if we go back far enough in time or if we could go somewhere else on the planet with very different air quality, water quality, diet, that women with the BRAC gene have a far, far, even lower than 24% rate of developing cancer. This is something we could actually study and research. So if you just imagine extrapolating back into the 19th century, the actual risk of breast cancer conferred by the BRAC gene by itself has got to be pretty small in the absence of whatever it is in the environment. So it's like a, a perfect storm kind of problem. The Brax gene actually confers a greater susceptibility to reacting to the bad thing in the environment by developing breast cancer. So it's really a susceptibility to the environment gene more than it's directly a cancer gene by itself. And this must be scientifically true just because of the simple information that's in the abstract of the original paper. So the conclusion that I come to is, of course, we need more research and more study and so on. We're not going to jump to one conclusion from one study. But this is generally the way it works in biology and in cancer. So therefore, we should be shifting the emphasis in terms of research funding, promotions, what the Susan G. Komen Foundation is supporting, from the genes to the environment. Should we totally forget the genes? No, obviously not. This is important information. Figuring out what it is in the environment and what it's doing to our genes, which is resulting in cancer, we have to know what genes we're talking about. So the gene is part of the story. It's a matter of emphasis. We should be shifting a lot more of our resources to figuring out what is it in the environment, just using BRAC as an example, what is it in the environment that's coming into our bodies and how is it interacting with the BRAC gene in micro, micro, micro detail? That's where we should be putting a lot of our money. Just like this mysterious lung cancer epidemic that we have. Well, so 80 years ago, everybody was just thinking, what's the cause of lung cancer? Then we found out scientifically that there's something coming in from the environment, which is tobacco smoke. So it's not just your genes. Your risk of developing lung cancer goes up if you smoke. Your risk of developing breast cancer goes up, but we don't know what it is in the environment. So we should find out, because maybe we could do something about it. So I think that's just important information for everybody in general to have, that it's not all about your genes. It has a lot to do with what's going on in the environment. Thank you. Mm -hmm.